Okay, here we are in San Diego talking to Vernor Vinci. Thank you very much, Vernor, for being with us. Good to be here. And we will be talking uh, about spimes and uh, this uh, new category of objects that are aware of their environment, of where they are, when they are, and through sensors uh, give us a high level of knowledge about what uh, the planet is telling us, as it has been telling us a lot of things uh, forever, in thousands of years, and uh, when uh, the intensity of our exploitation of the planet was of a different scale, uh, the murmurs were enough and we could uh, still follow uh, and adapt to what those murmurs were, were saying. Um, today the intensity of uh, how we behave on the planet is such that uh, uh, we have to listen more carefully, uh, acquire the signals with a higher level of intensity, and that is what, in my opinion, spimes uh, uh, achieve. Uh, of course, in your book, uh, Rainbow's End, uh, the network is uh, ubiquitous. And uh, anywhere the protagonists of your book go, they can talk to the network um, directly or through intermediaries. Uh, so I think you uh, can comment on this vision of uh, spimes pervasively um, altering our environment. Uh, what is your comment? Um, spimes, which you, I, I think, hit on the, on the important features there, objects which because of embedded networked processors with sensors and sometimes effectors, uh, they know what they are, they know where they are, and they can communicate with their nearby neighbors and thus with the whole world potentially. Uh, that th this raises the possibility of a, 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 a digital Gaia, uh, you know, an internet beneath the internet, and uh, both in terms of reporting to us what the world is, but also uh, uh, making the world itself composed of objects that have a certain amount of intelligence. If, if such devices become sufficiently widespread, then it is though reality itself begins to wake up. Or as uh, some people put it, reality becomes its own database. But there are a lot of things about the real world where the data is best encapsulated in the reality itself. And so reality is its own database is where most data should be. For instance, the, uh, the quality uh, uh, of the structural integrity of the chair you're sitting on. Um, I would prefer to have that be information that the chair knows about rather than information that it has to go to a server farm in Oregon mm -hmm. uh, uh, to, to learn about. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I can see this complementing the central server farm issue and ultimately becoming much more, much more, uh, uh, probably much more important than central servers. Uh, if you look around right now, we are right at the point where I think this uh, 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 ubiquitous networked embedded microprocessors is, is just taking off. There are various uh, um, entrepreneurial initiatives right now where enormous profits can be made by exploiting this. And there are some people you talk to now that say, ah, the, 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 the internet has now been invented and we're just putting little decorations on it. That is so dead wrong. Uh, ten years from now, looking back, I, I would suspect that the, um, uh, the smart reality vision will be well underway and, and they'll look back and talk about this era and the equivalent of the Google people and the Microsoft people and what they are, are doing. I think also, so I am, this is a trend that's going like gangbusters. It is very successful and its potential for enormous change is there. Um, it also is, 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 is worrisome because uh, um, uh, it introduces another form of single failure point in physical processes. Furthermore, uh, since this stuff is all networked, you could imagine the, 
the equivalent of the network failures that we worry about on the internet. Imagine that in a highly spymified uh, world. Economically, this is a trend that is really going to, to progress. So as it progresses, people should be thinking about fallback positions and alternatives and maintaining a heterogeneity of, of, of implementation because we, we are introducing something that has not had millions of years of natural selection to e even out the disasters. We're introducing it very, very fast, yeah. and uh, the, the disaster potential is very great there. Um, OpenSpime is taking uh, an open source approach to its hardware and software platform. There has been uh, some considerable positive uh, judgment regarding uh, the reliability and uh, stability of these uh, approaches, so uh, we certainly uh, hope that uh, it will produce uh, systems that uh, uh, are uh, as uh, free of bugs and as uh, uh, reliable as, as uh, possible. Uh, the first uh, uh, prototypes that we are uh, producing uh, today as OpenSpime are uh, for uh, carbon dioxide. That it is one of the most powerful greenhouse gases, the fact that uh, it has been treated only in aggregates of millions of tons from a statistical standpoint in the atmospheric studies and, and even there uh, you, you don't see and don't watch its dynamics uh, is, is potentially uh, harmful, it's potentially dangerous because we don't understand uh, what is going on. With uh, the open spine carbon dioxide uh, uh, sensors uh, when available in, in the thousands or millions around, uh, people will understand much better. A lot of times you have uh, regulatory pressure on cars, uh, uh, compulsory car pooling and things like that in winter. Well, guess what? That is when the heaters go full steam. And with, with our spimes, people will be able and understand uh, the uh, dynamics of, of their pollution factors and the gradients and then with mashups on, on Google Maps or with other visualization means correlate the data to um, um, weather patterns, seasonalities or any other uh, value uh, gained from the environment to, to achieve more knowledge and then to act upon that knowledge. The, the particular application that you're just talking about is uh, a, a, a canonical example of, uh, of, of, the, of the virtue of, of such lo lo locality uh, and that uh, a, a person can instantly multiply the, the utility and the virtuosity of it by just thinking of all the other things that you could also monitor. Like carbon monoxide would be super good to monitor Absolutely. in a much more acute, <laughs> a much more acute way. But in, 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 in many things, just a, a matter of, of convenience. Like, for instance, you're driving to a restaurant uh, and you want to know where there's an empty parking spot. Uh -huh. um, so uh, this is the sort of thing that I think once a person gets the idea, such as you just explained, um, and can see its application on a very small scale, like finding a, finding a parking spot, or on very large scales where you're talking about a, a, being able to look at a social reality, say, or a physical reality of life, that that at all scales there are these enormous payoffs uh, to, to this idea. And so I, I think this is the sort of thing that, uh, one amusing thing of watching this tape 10 or 15 years from now is we'll probably either be laughably wrong in some enormous way, or it'll be, say, uh, why are they saying all these obvious things? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Thank you very much. Ah, thank you, David. <laughs>